Good morning, boys and girls. Um, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, I am well, and I know many times I forget to say my name, but I know most of us know me. I'm Teacher Andrew, and I thank God for this day. Uh, I know you've been seeing me very often, but I love doing what I'm doing. You know, it's a joy it, uh, to share God's word, to speak to you, you know, even as I speak to you, I'm also talking to myself. I'm teaching myself, you know, the word of God. So it's really a joy to take time to spend with you. And even before we begin today's lesson, I want us to take some time and pray together. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you this day. And thank you for the blessings of you being always there for us. And as you continue to teach us your word, we just want to thank you because it shows how much you care and you love us that you continue to show us the way that we should go. That Lord of oh God, even when we go through challenges, when we go through hard times, even at times like this that we in school, some of us are about to do our exams, others you know, are preparing for a, you know, another year in the middle of the year, which is not the usual. And we thank you because you will always be there for us and you will always direct our steps. That we do not have to worry, but we only need to look up to you. So help us as we uh, listen to what you have for us today, that Lord of God will learn from you and will become that which you've called us to be. We thank you and we pray for even myself as I share this word. May you also speak to me as you speak to these children. We give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, boys and girls, today it's another lesson. And as we go through these lessons, you know, I desire that each and every day there is something that we pick that helps us to live a better life and to help us understand what God desires for us, because he's the one who created us. And being that he's the one who created us, he knows how best for us to live our lives. You know, when you create something, you know the best way to use that, or the best way for it to have a better outcome. And the same way, God has created us, and so he knows the best for us. And as I always say, that he has a good plan for each one of us. Uh, okay, today's lesson, uh, is God's good laws. Again, God, good laws. This comes from Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 to 20, uh, to 20, chapter 20, verse 21. Let me repeat. That comes from Exodus chapter 19, verse 1, all the way to chapter 20. So I won't read all of this. But I want you to go through that in your you know, spare time. When you're alone and you have time to go through the word of God, just go through those two uh, 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 Bible chapters and see what God says about that. And our lesson today is to help us be able to understand what are God's laws and why he gives us those laws. You know, many times, we dislike rules. I don't know how many love rules. I don't think there are many who would say they love rules. We always feel that rules are other people's ideas to try and force us to be like them or to do things their way. And so many of times we do not like them. But for this reason, you know, we also feel that even when God gives us rules or laws for us to follow, we feel they are too strict, you know, but God's laws are given to us so that we can live a better life. 
and disobeying God's laws always results to trouble and also results to punishment, which is the same way, you know, in our schools, at home, and all that. And I would ask us, you know, a few questions that, to think about. So one, question number one, what are some of the rules your parents make for you? What are some of those rules? You know, think about them. What are the rules that your parents make for you at home? At the same time, you can, th you can think about the rules that are made in school. You know, what are some of those rules? Question number two, why do they give you these rules? Either it's your parents or at school, why are you given those rules? Think about it. Question number three, would you want to go to a school where there is no rules? You do whatever you want. Would you want to go to a school like that? You know, why? You know, you give, give answers of why you should either go or not. Yeah? And the last question that I want us to, uh, to ask today is, what do you think is the purpose of rules and laws? What is their purpose? You know, as you've gone through school, those, many, those few years or many years you've been in school, you know, or at, you know, how long you've been uh, living in this world at home, you know, what, what do you think is the purpose of those rules that you're given at home and, or at school? And as we think about this, let me give us a story. You know, think about this. Think about a football match. You know, it has two teams that go to prize, you know, or a cup or anything. And imagine where they go to play football and there's no rules. You just play and do whatever you want. And then think about it this way. Playing the same match but with rules that guides you as you play this match. What would be the best place you would you want to be? Is it when there is no rules or when there is rules? And I believe many of us would say, you know, it's when there is rules. Because rules helps us to have a better time, be able to play, you know, it directs where we are supposed to, 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 to you know, the team you're supposed to play against, the rules that we're supposed to take in, 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 uh, in, in place so that we can have a better match. And at the end of the day, we can really say this team won and this team did lose. But imagine if there is no rules. It will be hard. And so, as we think about that, think about the story in, our, in uh, today's uh, story in Exodus chapter 19 from verse 1 to chapter 20, verse 21. Here we meet the Israelites. And uh, God is speaking to the Israelites. And I'll read a few verses. As I begin chapter 19, it says that in the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on the very day they came to the desert of Sinai, after they set out from Redim, they entered the desert of Sinai and Israel there in the desert in front of the mountain. Verse 3, Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. Verse 4, You yourself have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So this is Moses being spoken. Uh, spoken to by God. And so Moses in verse 7 went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them and, and, and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The Lord, the people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answers back to the Lord. In verse 9, the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you 
in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always be there to, uh, and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the people what, uh, sorry, then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. So Moses has gone back to the Lord and he's told him, you know, the people have agreed to follow everything that God has for them. And verse uh, 16, I'll jump and go to verse 16. On the morning of the third day, there was a thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and, every, and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in smoke. Sorry, because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently and the sound of the trumpets grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke. And, uh, and, and, the, and the voice of, of God answered him. And after that, we see God descending to the mountain to speak to his people. So in verse 23, Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us. Put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy. Verse 24, the Lord rep uh, replied, Go down and bring Aaron up with you. But the priests and the people must not force their ways through uh, to come to the Lord, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. You know, and after all this has happened, in chapter 20, we see God speaking to them you know, in verse 1 of, of chapter 20. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You know, he said that to remind them that what he had done, you know, what he has said in chapter 19, reminding them what he has done for them till this moment. And out of this, he tells them and gives them his rules or his laws that they should follow. And when we go through those laws is what we call the Ten Commandments, which sums up what God is telling us in his word. And when you think about the Ten Commandments, I will divide them into two groups. Two groups because part of it speaks about God's laws about himself, how we should relate with him. And the other part of the laws speaks to us on how we should relate with others, you know, about our relationships. And so, uh, commandment one to four is about how we should treat our relationship with God. And that's where he says, I'll paraphrase them for us to understand, but you can go and read each one of them. Commandment one, he says, worship no other God but me. You know, I can read that uh, and then I will just go through the others. You shall have no other gods before me. He said he is the only one to be worshipped. He is the only one who is mighty and powerful. In commandment two, he tells us, do not make or worship an idol. You know, anything else that comes between us and him is an idol. We do not have to shape something and put it there like we see some of the people do and worship those, you know, just to say that that's the idol. But even at times when we have put people or we've put money or we've put things of value between us and God and we value them more than we value God or value people more than we value God, then those becomes idol because they are coming between us and God. Commandment three that do not misuse the name of the Lord. You know, that we should not just call out the name of the Lord in vain. His name is supposed to be of help to us, to bring help to our lives. 
but not just to mention them for the sake of mentioning the name. You know, it's a powerful name. He says the name that is above all other names. By his name all nations shall bow, and every tongue confess that he is God. So it's a precious name that should, be not, that should not be used in vain. And commandment four, that we should keep Sabbath as a rest day. That we need to take time to worship God. And now I would even emphasize, it's not just about a day, but it's about you know, us taking time to relate with God. You know, a time that we pray, a time that we, we, we read his word, a time that we spend with God in prayer. You know, that is Sabbath. It's something that is holy, you know. And he also encourages not to forget meeting together. Yes, I know for a season like this, because of the situation that is there, that we are not able to do this physically. But we are still supposed to do it virtually. And that's why we have our, these online lessons and even online services, so that we can continue to relate together as a family, as we worship God. The rest of the of the commandments talks about our relationship with others. And this is what, uh, uh, from commandment five, all the way to commandment 10. I'll go through them briefly. Commandment five, respect your father and mother. You know, we're supposed to honor our parents. It doesn't matter how they look, what they have or they do not have, but we're supposed to respect them. And Ephesians chapter six, verse one to three, really makes this you know, very important. Because it says, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, that children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is right. That it is right to obey our parents in the Lord. That means to obey them by doing that which is right before God. And verse 2, that honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. That this commandment has a promise. It is not just obeying. It's not just about respecting them and honoring them. But there is a promise that comes with it. There is benefit that comes with it. And this is the benefit. That is in verse 3 of Ephesians 6 that says, So that it may go well with you, and that you may live a long life in this earth. That for you, for you, everything about your life to go well, for you to live a long life, it's attached to you respecting and honoring your parents. God would have done that without your parents. But he felt necessary to attach that in our respect to our parents. And so if you do not honor your parents, you do not respect them, then things will not go well with you and that you will not be able to enjoy long life. So those are things that you need to look at because all of us desire to live a long life. All of us desire that things may go well with us. So all you know what you, what you need to do. Uh, commandment six, do not command, uh, command, uh, commit murder. You know, if we, are, we are supposed to love and care, not to kill. And even killing is what makes us live in, live in fear. So God desires that we live happily. But how will, he, will we be able to live happily if we are killing each other? So God desires that we do not. That is a commandment that call us. And so we who are called by God, we should not. Uh, commandment seven, do not commit adultery. God desires that we live happily in our families. But adultery, which goes out of God's law, brings pain and hurt in our families. You know, because it brings hatred between our parents, which at the end of the day goes down to us as their children and it hurts us. But God desires that we may live together as one and we should not go out there and relate with others, yet we have been committed to this marriage and to build our families. Commandment number eight, do not steal. It is not right for you to steal. Even in those two small things that you do, even in school, that God desires that we should not steal. Because God is our provider. He provides for us. You do not need to steal. Just ask if you need to. You know, if you need something. And you'll be given. And God will also provide if we seek him and ask him to provide for us. Commandments number nine. Do not lie. God desires that we should not be liars. And in John 
chapter 8 and verse 44. And I'll read that verse in John chapter 8 and verse 44. Uh, it says that uh, you belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. You know, this is what the Lord says about lying. That when we are lying, we are speaking the language of the enemy, the language of the devil. And that means we are pleasing him. So we are not pleasing God by lying. And commandment 10, the last commandment, is that God desires that uh, do not desire the things of others. In other version, it says do not covet other people's things. And this is what it means, is that it's, it's, it's wanting other people's belongings so badly that you feel bad, you feel sad, or mad that they have them. Even to an extent that you will do whatever you need to do to get it. You know, that's coveting. You know, it's not just to look at, you know, sometimes you may look at something that someone has and you desire it, but not to take it away from them, but so that you can have something like that or you learn how to get something better. But in this uh, uh, chapter, when he talks about this, uh, about this commandment, he's talking about not only just desiring that thing, but going ahead and being mad about it because they have it. You know, you covet it so much that you would even kill or you would even do whatever wrong or whatever that you need to do so that you can get it. That is not right, you know. So it's for us to pray that God will provide. And the Bible always tells us that God is always there to provide for us. And so when we think about all this, you will look at it and, and realize that God's laws are good because they are there to help us live a better life, to be happily with God, to have a good relationship with others. You know, imagine if you are to follow these laws, all of us in this world, you know, how nice will it be? How fun will it be? We'll not have to fear, you know, the fear at night, the fear of going to you where, you know, you, you will not fear all these things because you're living happily and well with others. But because these things are not happening, that's why we have a lot of trouble around us. And so my prayer this day is that, that it would start with us to obey God's commandment. Because it's not about that because someone else is not doing it, I'm also can, can't do it, but it's supposed to start with me. So I should start doing these things. And I'm speaking to myself, you know, as teacher Andrew, I should start doing these things and asking God to help me. I know it is not easy. You know, there's a friend of mine who shared some time back and said, you know, God's laws are good, but also they are not easy. You know, as you say, you know, we feel they are so strict, but they are wonderful because they make our lives better. And so it's also for me, and always to ask God to help us follow his laws. Our memory verse for today, you know, comes from Psalms 119, verse 137 and 138. Psalms 119, verse 137 and 138. And this is what it says. Righteous are you, O Lord. You and your laws are right. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. <clears throat> I repeat. Righteous are you, O Lord. You and your laws are right. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. Psalms 119 verse 137 and 38 and 138 and those are these are memory verse for us to memorize and keep it because it reminds us that God is righteous and his him and his laws are right for us <clears throat> that his statutes those values that we have talked about the rules and the laws that we've talked about and many others that you spoken in his word that they are laid down and are righteous and they are fully trustworthy because they will make our lives better. And so as we pray, my prayer is that all of us would ask the Lord to, to help us become and be able to follow his law because they are good. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your law that are good, they are trustworthy, they are right. 
And Almighty God, we pray that you would help us follow them. Because Lord, oh God, they make our lives better. They make life better even here on earth and even in our families, oh God. And as children, may you teach us to follow your laws so that, Lord, oh God, that at the end of the day, that we become that which you desire us to be. We thank you and we honor you as we go into the week and as we go to school. We pray that you walk with us and help us to follow your laws. For we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So boys and girls, know that God's, good, God's laws are good and follow them each and every day. God bless you and have a lovely week. Amen.